Hey, Shalom, Israel, Mosai, and Christ bless. I'm Captain Mattathias. And I'm Officer Losias. All right, and we're back with another 15 minutes with the captains. Right. All right, today's topic is why won't that one sin go away? All right, so many, many times before we get into it, uh, coming into the truth, there's a lot of things that we have to give up. And majority of the time, we give these things up cold turkey. Mm. All right, we got to keep the Sabbath day holy. Okay, I can't uh, buy or sell. All right, check. That's easy. I got to wear fringes. All right, check. I got to grow my beard, so on and so on, all right? But there's other sins that's not so easy to get rid of. Right. And then, you know, later on in the truth, you find these things coming back from time to time. All right, so today's class is going into how to, first and foremost, find out why it keeps coming back and how to combat it, all right? Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 41. Matthew, chapter 26, and verse 41. Come on. Watch and pray. That ye enter not into temptation. Right. So the scripture is telling us we will enter into temptation. Excuse me. So uh, read that again for me. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. Right. So the scripture is saying watch and pray that you don't. Okay. Come on. The spirit indeed is willing. Right. So at the end of the day, I can say for the most part, the majority of us don't want to sin. We don't want to go against the commandment. Read. But the flesh is weak. So he's telling us to watch and pray constantly because of the weak flesh. All right, from there, let's go to Romans chapter 13, verse 14. All right, so we got to think about that, understanding that our flesh is weak and the temptation is going to come. All right, read what you got. The book of Romans chapter 13 and verse 14. Come on. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. So it says put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. And make not provisions for the flesh. It says make not provisions for the flesh, meaning what? You shouldn't be alone. Majority of the time, Mm. sin comes when you're idle and you have a lot of free time. Okay? Let's get that. And uh, Sirach. Sirach chapter 33 and verse 27. Come on. Send him to labor. That he be not idle. Right. So the scripture says, send him to labor that he be not idle. Why? For idleness teacheth much evil. Idleness teacheth much evil. So that's one way not to make a provision for the flesh. Stay doing the work no matter right. what. Keep yourself occupied. All right. Um, now, give me the book of 2 Corinthians 12. All right. Because a lot of times, um, you know, we, we get to the point where we feel miserable and desperate, but we forgot one thing. We still got to what? We got to show that we're worthy unto the Most High in Christ. So he ain't going to remove everything because if he did, hey, all of us would just automatically make the kingdom. And that's not the case. We got to prove to the Father that we are worthy of it. Read verse um, 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7. Come on. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of of the revelations. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Right. That's that one. That's that pesky sin that just continues to be there. That's Mm. that stronghold that you have to prove to the most high that you're worthy of the kingdom by overcoming that one that he left for you. Right. The messenger of Satan to buffet me. And that's also going to keep you in check, understanding that you still have to battle sin on a day to day, meaning you shouldn't be puffed up because you're just like every other man and every other woman. Read. Lest I should be exalted above measure. Read. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. He asked the Mosad three times that to take this away from him. Read. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So he said, If you put on the Lord Jesus, you will be able to overcome. Let's drop that and let's go to Luke chapter 4, verse 13. A lot of reasons why we. Uh, haven't exactly gotten over that one uh, pesky sin that keeps uh, plaguing us is because we, as humans, we let our guard down, okay? I'm going to show you why. Read what you got. Luke chapter 4 and verse 13. Come on. And when the devil had ended all the temptation. Right, there he goes, because the temptation, it only lasts for a certain time. When you're in the temptation, it don't feel like that. It feel like it's never going to end, like it's always going to be there. But the scripture says what it says. Read it again. And when the devil had ended all the temptation. When he ended all the temptation, read. He departed from him for a season. For a season, meaning what? It's going to be seasonal. But you don't know when it's going to come back. Right. And that's what we do. We feel, okay, all right, I'm good because, hey, I ain't dealing with that no more. Mm. That's one of the worst things you could do, do is say that you're not dealing with it because if you speak it, now you believe that thing. 
Okay, when you say you don't deal with it, you have convinced yourself, I don't have to watch and pray anymore for this because I have overcome it. It's no, it's coming back. It just may not be in that particular season, but it's going to come back. All right, Second Ezra 8 and 35. All right, so we can't deceive ourselves. Read what you got. Second Ezra chapter 8 and verse 35. Read that. For in truth there is no man among them that be born, but he hath dealt wickedly. And among the faithful, there is none which hath not done amiss. There you go. So the scripture saying, hey, the flesh is willing, but I'm sorry, the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. It's showing you even those of the faithful, hey, every last one of them have done amiss. They went against the commandments. So don't think that you are immaculate and that you're going to be the one to just ace it. No, it's not the case. Give me 1 John 1 and 8. 1 John chapter 1, verse 8. Come on. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 8. Read that. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. There it is. There it is. That's you being lackadaisical and you being at ease when he leave you for that season. Oh, I'm good. I don't deal with that. If you say you have no sin, hey, you deceiving yourself. And you already know what's going to happen because when he come back that next season, you wasn't prepared. And there you go. You don't fell into it again. Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. Matthew 12 and 43 is going to show us exactly what happens when you deceive yourself. Watch this. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 43. Uh-huh. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man. That's that one thorn. That's that, um, that's that pesky sin that keep coming back. Come on. He walketh through dry places, mm -hmm. seeking rest, and findeth none. That's the thing. He's, he was done with that season of temptation. Now he went, you know, from here and there. But eventually he's going to want to come back for that trial. Read. Uh. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. Come on. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Uh -huh. Then he goeth and taketh hit with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. That's the thing. When we deceive ourselves, all right, when we let our guard down, understand that we are opening ourselves up to be destroyed. Meaning you thought you were bad. You thought you had an addiction or you thought uh, you were depressed. No, you just wait until you stop watching and you stop praying. You wait because it's going to be seven times worse. I'll finish that out. Verse 45. Then he goeth and taketh with himself seven other spirits mm -hmm. more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Right. And the last state of that man is going to be worse than the first. So it's an, either, it's an even harder uh, effort to get out of that rut. Mm. Because now you're not battling one, you're battling seven. Okay? Now give me Second Ezra's chapter, not Second Ezra, Sirach 17 and 24. Because all that is what? You failed in patience. When you watch and pray constantly, that takes effort. You have to have the spirit of patience to do that, all right? That's something, also discipline, which we're going to jump into as well. A lot of times we say, oh, I'm done with that. I'm ready to move on to something bigger and better. When you're forgetting that the laws is everything we need. Right. That's, that's the basis of all of this. That's how we get the kingdom. A lot of times, well, I want to study this and I want to I wanna do these things, but you're forgetting about how you even got to that point, all right? Give me Sirach 17 and 24. Sirach chapter 17 and verse 24. Come on. But unto them that repent, he granted them return. Come on. And comforted those that failed in patience. Right. And comforted those who failed in patience. Meaning what? When the, uh, the Satan left you for that season, you know, you got calm. You understand? He came back and you fell. So understanding now, this time, you got to do what? You got to watch and pray. You got to get yourself built up. Give me James 4 and 7. All right. So now this is uh, the stage to recovery right here. All right, stage to recovery. Read what you got. The book of James, chapter 4 and verse 7. Come on. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. So put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. Resist the devil. And now you got to resist the devil. Uh, yeah, they say it takes 21 days to break a habit. All right, so you got to resist the devil. So one day, two days. Now you got to start building that pattern of good works. Give me that in Titus 2. Titus chapter 2, verse 7. All right, come on. Titus chapter 2 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. Right. That's what we got to do. In all things, we got to show ourselves a pattern of good works. Give me Matthew 17 and 21 because we have to be real with ourselves. 
the Bible, it's our playbook, all right? It tells us exactly what to do to be successful, all right? But we got to follow it. We have to follow it in sincerity. Read what you got. Matthew chapter 17. Verse 21. And verse 21. Because it said a pattern of good work. So you get that going, you get out of your rut. But now to take it to another level to make sure you're putting on the Lord Jesus Christ, this is something you also have to do. Verse 21. Come on. How be it, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. So the scripture says there's certain spirits, there's certain uh, sins that will only leave you by what? By prayer and fasting. By prayer and fasting. Now give me that in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17. All right? Because some of us, we like to fast only during the Day of Atonement. No, no, no. How consistently are you fasting? All right? Are we hit and missing it? Are we, or do we have some discipline to it? Read what you got. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17. Mm-hmm. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing, meaning what? It should be, what, three times a day? Right. And you should be consistently fasting. I'm not saying fast seven times a week. I'm not saying that, but you got to get something in rotation that's good for your soul, okay? From there, let's go to Titus 3 and 8, dealing with that pattern of good work still. Titus chapter 3 and verse 8. Uh-huh. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly. How often? Constantly. Read. That they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. And that's what it's all about. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to maintain those good works. All right, we may have failed. All right, we got to get back in the swing of things, resist mm-hmm. the devil, start fasting and praying, get ourselves built up. And when we get ourselves built up, we want to maintain those good works. All right, from there, let's go to Sirach. Uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 35 and verse 20. Sirach chapter 35 and verse 20. Come on. Mercy is seasonable in the time of affliction. You see that thing right there? Like you told Paul and 2 Corinthians 12 and 8 says, my grace is sufficient for thee. So he's saying, hey, as long as you put me on, he says, in the time of affliction, read it again. Mercy is seasonable in the time of affliction Come on. as clouds of rain in the time of a drought. Now let's jump over to Sirach 39 and 33. All right, so we, we have our affliction in season, but he's saying he'll give us the mercy and the grace to cover us in season as well. Read what you got. Sirach 39 and verse 33. Come on. All the works of the Lord are good, Uh huh. and he will give every needful thing in due season. But we have to wait on him. Right. We have to wait on the Lord and realize the temptation is going to end and he's going to get us through. All right. From there, let's go to the book of First Peter's. I want First Peter's chapter one and uh, let's read verses six and seven. First Peter chapter one and verse six. Come on. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season. If need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Right. And it said, if need be, because the Most High, he allows these uh, temptations and afflictions to happen to refine us. You understand? You may be a prideful person. So you need be, you need to go through some trials so you can get that out of you. Okay? Uh, read on. Verse 7. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, that perisheth, Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Right. So right now, we want to take our L's right now so we can get ready for when Christ returns. So, yeah, it may hurt. It may sting. Correction may hurt or whatever. But it's best that we do that now so we can prepare for that day. All right. From there, let's go to the book of um, Hebrews 11 and 23. Let's get a real life example. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 23. Uh Uh-huh. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandments. Read on. By the faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Right, because being the son of Pharaoh's daughter, he was a, he was a, a prince, you understand, in, um, in Egypt. All right, so he had whatever he needed, whatever he wanted. Because jump down to verse, um, actually, let's just continue to read. Watch this. Verse 25, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. There it is, because it's seasonal. It's seasonal. Those temptations are seasonal. So it says it's pleasurable for that one moment, Mm. but that one moment can cost you 
everything. Right. Right. But it said it's better to go through affliction because we Moses is still talked about to this day. And yes, he will be in the kingdom. OK, when that comes. All right. Let's go to Luke 14 and 33. Luke chapter 14 and 33. Luke chapter 14 and verse 33. Come on. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath. Right. So if we don't forsake uh, that sin for, for a season. All right. Read. He cannot be my disciple. We cannot be the disciples of Christ. All right. So we always have to meditate on these things, myself included. All right, let's go to James chapter 1 and verse 12. Just one more. And then we got wisdom of Solomon. Then we'll close. James chapter 1 and verse 12. Come on. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Right. The scriptures say, blessed is the man that endureth temptation, meaning it's only going to last for so long. Right. Read. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Right. And give me that in Deuteronomy 8 real quick, because we have to understand when it comes to this, you know, this thing that is hard for us to get over, he's literally telling us if we can just overcome that, we're going to have the kingdom. And all of you, if you've been in the truth for a little, you know, for at least two, three years, you have a pretty good idea of what that one pesky sin is. And only you need to know that. But understand this. God is telling us if we battle that thing and overcome that and put on the Lord Jesus Christ and overcome that thing, we will get the kingdom. That's what he's telling us. All right, read that. Read that. Well, verse 1? Hey, uh, 2. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 2. Come on. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. Come on. To humble thee. To humble thee. That's why we have these trials and afflictions. To humble us. That's why Paul had that thorn in the flesh. To buffet him so he wouldn't think too highly of himself. Read. And to prove thee. And to prove thee to see if we are the disciples of Christ. If we're going to follow him through our hard times. All right. Last scripture. Um, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 22. Going into putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. Read what you got. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, and verse 22. Uh -huh. For wisdom, which is the worker of all things. It says wisdom is the worker of all things. Come on. Taught me, for in her is an understanding spirit. Holy, one only, manifold, subtle, lively, clear, undefiled, plain, not subject to hurt, mm -hmm. loving the thing that is good, quick, which cannot be let it ready to do good. Right. So it says when you have wisdom, you have all of these attributes. Mm. You have every last one of these attributes. Understanding. All right. Uh, you're lively, undefiled, ready to do good. All right. Read on. Verse 23. Kind to man, steadfast, sure, free from care. Free from care because you're not worried about anything because you understand that this Bible is all you need. Come right. on. Having all power. Uh-huh. Overseeing all things. Come on. And going through all understanding, pure and most subtle spirits. Right. So it said having all power. When you are in the spirit, you have all power. It's up to you. Because when we um, commit acts, commit sinful acts, it's a choice. So the scripture is telling you when you're rolling in wisdom, you have the power to say no. Right. Okay, you have the power to uh, conquer that temptation. Read. Verse 24. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. Come on. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. Uh-huh. For she is the breath of the power of God. You see that? The breath of the power of God. Keep his commandments and live. All right, come on. And a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Mm -hmm. Therefore, can no defiled thing fall into her. That's why I said in Romans, it said, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provisions for the flesh. Come on. For she is the brightness of the everlasting light, mm -hmm. the unspotted mirror of the power of God. That's the perfection of God. That's wisdom. And that perfection, that uh, wisdom was perfected in Jesus Christ. Read. And the image of his goodness. The image of his goodness. Come on. And being but one, she can do all things. And remaining in herself, she maketh all things new. So it's telling us, yes, we could be perfect like Christ commanded us to in Matthew 5 and 48. Because that's the only way we're going to obtain that uh, mercy and that crown. Read. And in all ages, entering into holy souls, come on. She maketh them friends of God 
and prophets. Uh -huh. For God loveth none but him that dwelleth with wisdom. Come on. For she is more beautiful than the sun, and above all the order of stars, being compared with the light, she is found before it. Mm -hmm. For after this cometh night. Says, for after this cometh night. But vice shall not prevail against wisdom. Right. So whatever vice, whatever hang up you have, it shall not prevail against wisdom. All right. And with that, we say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I, see, we deliver the truth. <laughs>